So the second lecture is about this algorithm deep pass.、Uh, I also want to talk about multi-hop reasoning and some data sets. So you know that lambda should use for for Google should use multi-hop reasoning. <coughs> So reasoning on knowledge graphs could be path-based method. It's accurate and explainable, or it could be embedding-based methods. So embedding-based methods allow us to compare and find similar entities in the vector space, just like trans e. That I have explained in the playlist for knowledge graphs, and even the previous lecture which 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 I explained. But now, if you merge these, if you combine these two paradigms,、uh, this is our new algorithm T D pass that I want to explain from from these、uh, guys in California, Santa Barbara, in two thousand eighteen. So we are talking about the number of paths, and we have distribution of reasoning path. And there are many rewards. If you've seen my playlist for reinforcement learning, so you need reward function in reinforcement learning. And there are different rewards. For example, here global accuracy because we want if if pass. For example, in a dialogue, in a dialogue, it's really important. This idea can be applied there as well. And they have they have, they have applied it in the Raza company in USA. So the global accuracy, if the pass reaches the target, so you should satisfy the customer, the the answer. To your to the customer's question should be satisfied. Otherwise, you receive a complaint, and that complaint is a measure of inaccuracy. And then reward functions, and the past diversity. So we pre-train knowledge graph embeddings. We can have states. We can have actions, just like reinforcement learning. And the states. First of all, we know we need to know the embedding of current embedding of the of current current entity. I mean, and then we need to know how far we are from the target. I mean, the the true answer. How far we are. So this is the the states, and then then we can concatenate it. And this is the states that we are in, and so we should do a set of actions in order to reach the answer, in order to get closer and closer to the target. And there are a bunch of methods in reinforcement learning. You could use Monte Carlo policy gradient, the classical reinforcement algorithm, nineteen ninety two. Or you could use some advanced methods such as policy learning, supervised imitation policy learning. Of course, I've explained other approaches in my playlist for reinforcement learning. And what is multi-hop question answering? Sometimes we need more than one supporting documents to answer the question. Multi-hop question answering requires models. To gather information from different parts of a text to answer a question, most current approaches learn to address this task in an end-to-end -end way with neural networks, without maintaining an explicit representation of the reasoning process. So forget about rule-based approaches. Nowadays, we do everything with neural networks, and everything is、uh, hopefully end to end. For example,、uh, this multi-hop question answering. What are the genres of movies written by Lewis Mellis? It's the answer is crime. So we need more than one supporting documents to answer the question. So here, for example, one, two, three. One, two, three. We have three hops. We need three hops to answer the question. We cannot answer with just one, 
one piece of uh, sentence. We need more documents. And here, we assume that we have knowledge graph, but sometimes we don't, you don't have knowledge graphs, so you should convert your text using some, some pipelines, uh, convert a lot of text into a knowledge graph, which, you, uh, which I will explain it in a different lecture. You should you use, for example, coreference resolution, a name entity recognition, and those techniques in order to create a pipeline of those uh, algorithms in order to create a clean, clean knowledge graphs so that we can we can use in this in these kinds of algorithms that require knowledge graphs. Of course, it's very hard to create knowledge graphs from billions of documents. So, so it's a bit of a challenge, and I mean, uh, we are still not sure if this is a good approach or what kind of knowledge graph are the are the entities are the nodes of this or entities could be a sentence or entities could be a paragraph. So depending on how you, but, um, but it is common in the knowledge graph literature that each node is just an entity. So it is common that it is a simple entity and not just a paragraph or a sentence or a, or a clause in discourse parsing or those things. So those are something that you could define in future. But when we talk about knowledge graph, we need each node is just an entity, a single word. But you could use, you could create a new type of knowledge graph that each node is a paragraph, for example. Each node could be a sentence. Each node could be a clause in discourse parsing or any abstract thing that you could imagine. So there are lots of ways for multi-hub approach. You could just follow links, it's very simple, but you could generate text queries or generate vector queries. And two great researchers in NLP that I really like, and I've learned a lot by reading their beautiful articles. Uh, Multi-hop question. I want to explain. Uh, first of all, this this article is really interesting, and uh, so we have three modules. So I want to explain this article. We have three modules. First, knowledge graph embedding module that creates embedding for all entities. We have question embedding. Find the embedding of the question. For example, here we are finding the embedding of the question, and because a question is a sentence, is, a, is using a language. A language is temporal, so we need to use those sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, such as GRU, LSTM's uh, transformer, and so on. And also answer selection model, which reduces the set of candidate answer entities and selects the final answer. So after we have done this sequence to sequence model, we have a representation. We have an encoding of the question, let's say. And depending on that, we can create different scoring functions. For example, head, relation, tail. We can, we can say that here, we can define a, a different scoring function so that we can answer this, we can, we have a, uh, three modules, this first module, second module, the third module. So using these three modules, we can create, uh, we, can, we can measure by scoring function. And uh, so we have knowledge graph module for head entity question and answer. So the topic entities that you can find in your question and you have the answer as well. Because what is a training data? We have question and answer. So these are training data points.
So it learns the question embedding in different ways. You could use complex scoring function and and these answer entities are entity embedding are learned that in the previous step. For each question, the score is calculated with all the candidate answer entities. You could use a, a more general function using relation matching. So we just add another term. So the answer is the argmax of this scoring function and also another term we can this is a hyperparameter you could choose but this is a really good data set for multi-hop question answering hotspot qa but it has a strong supervision for supporting facts to enable more explainable question answering systems in 2018 and an example is that we need more than one supporting documents to answer the question as i said in the multi in the multi hop question answering for example for this question which city face was facing with law we need two pieces of evidence two pieces of uh, uh, documents so the retrieval module first retrieves for example says okay these two pieces are enough for you to answer the question and the reader is very uh, looks at the detailed things so it for example focuses on one of the pieces of evidence and tries to answer with just this this one it's just one of these uh, and different pieces the reader focuses on just one of them and answer the question and of course there could be a, a choreography orchestration of them of these pieces in order to answer and so in this multi-hop dense retrieval we have question encoding and it is called dense retrieval and there are many approaches for multi-hop approaches in the next lectures i will explain a lot of them for example, I will explain Lego, very nice article. I will explain it. I think this is uh, from that guy in Stanford, yes. Uh, and uh, there are many articles, variational reasoning, you know, from a small uh, great guy in uh, Amazon. And uh, there are many ideas.